Everyone, this is Heidi St. John. I'm glad you guys have found me at the Off the Bench podcast today. I have invited my friend Mark Sherwood to come on, and we're going to tackle your questions, starting with how to set a goal and achieve it in the new year. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. All right, you guys, so thank you for listening to the show and for continuing to leave reviews over at iTunes for the podcast. We appreciate it. Lots of questions are coming in for my friend, Dr. Mark, and so I can see that it's resonating with you guys. I'm really glad. Keep those coming. You can send questions for Dr. Mark or just questions for general uh, general questions to Mailbox Monday by going to HeidiStJohn.com forward slash Mailbox Monday. I hope you guys will take us up on that. In the new year, speaking of the questions that come to Dr. Mark, he's back today, and we're going to start tackling the topic of goals. Mark, greetings. Greetings and Happy New Year. I, I could say it in Spanish because I just returned from Cancun. You can say it in Espanol. Feliz Año Nuevo. Oh, my goodness. Well, Happy New Year, and I'm glad you got to go to Cancun with your beautiful wife. Sounds like a wonderful way to spend the holidays. We did. We had a good time. We were able to strategize and really um, hone in on our New Year's resolutions. We always do that every year. It's very important to get those resolutions written down, documented like a blueprint. Yeah, it's so good. You know, someone said to me the other day, why would you set a New Year? You know, what's the big deal with January? Who cares? I said, it's a clean slate. It's an opportunity. I mean, to me, every day is a clean slate. Like every Monday is a clean slate. You can look at it that way. But as a general rule, people go, oh, it's a new year. It's an opportunity for me to change the trajectory of my life, you know, and maybe uh, set on a new path, meet some new goals. A lot of people have health and fitness goals mm -hmm. for the new year. And that's really where I want to start. Talk to me about goal setting, because there's a lot of people that feel overwhelmed by an, let's start with exercise, like an exercise routine. It can feel very overwhelming, especially for people who are not used to exercise. They want to get into it. They want to just feel better. That's the, that's mm -hmm. the general consensus. Where do people start when they want to create a new exercise path so they can stick to it? Well, number one, they have to, it's a tactic I've learned over time, they have to failure-proof their goals. In other words, your goals have got to be so small that you're going to be successful. Because I've learned over time in the area of fitness, and I've been in this industry in and out for the last, you know, 40 years. I can tell you that many people start their goals on Monday, fail them by Tuesday, start again on Monday. They set the goals too high and the bar too high, and they can't reach it. Failure-proof your goals. In other words, with fitness, let's talk about two things a person can do. Number one, uh, the principle is move more, sit less. Let's understand that, right? And if you're not moving, you're dying. And the only day you don't exercise is the day you're not alive, right? So those are general overall principles. But when we talk about fitness in general, I like to set my goals on a weekly basis as uh, compared to a daily basis. There are reasons for that because sometimes a day gets a little out of sorts, doesn't it, right? So I like to say that this is what people want to shoot for, 150 minutes per week of dedicated physical activity known as exercise, 150 minutes a week. And that actually correlates very well with the American Heart Association recommendations. One of the few things I recommend. Or I was going to say, wow, there's something... There's yeah. something they said that you liked. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> rare, but that's it. Uh, and I also, you know, you look at it under week goals, like if that, if 150 minutes, you can translate it over seven days. And, and, and I get it just over 20 minutes. That's cool. But some days it didn't work out like that. It may be a Saturday or maybe off work if you work Monday through Friday. And you may be able to walk an hour or something like that. That's fine. That's 60 minutes. Scratch it off the list. You've got 90 left. There you go. So. Weekly goals are important. If you have not been exercising at all, cut it in half and make it 75. Mm, good. That's I love important. that. You got to do that. And do not set your goals any more than that. In other words, you set your goals so they appear almost ridiculously low so that you can get generate what I call success steps. Because many people, they've got more memories of failures than they do successes. We got to build up our memory bank, our sort of um, equity of successes. And when you do that, it becomes much easier. People say, well, do I need to lift weights? Well, yes. Do I need to do walking? Yes. All of the above. But if you haven't been doing anything, 75 minutes a week of dedicated activity at whatever you like to do. Yes. Find what you like to do and do it more. It's like 
Don't overcomplicate it. The keep it simple, silly principle is still alive in the area of exercise. I love that. And I think it's a good reminder for homeschool moms too, because a large part of the reason why a homeschool mom might start out and then end up failing is because she sets this big goal. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to get my kids up at six in the morning and we're going to be doing our chores by seven and by eight o'clock we'll be sitting down at the kitchen to, and then, you know, on Wednesday when the kids are crying and complaining and she's wondering why in the world she set the goal in the first place, she recognizes, Oh, Hey, I can't do this. And then you just yeah. give up and you get frustrated. And I think exercise the yeah. same way I discovered something that has that worked for me is I, I, I get very bored. Mm-hmm. I know Mark, you, you're going to probably look down on me, but I don't love exercising. It's not my no. favorite thing to do, but I have discovered it's because I like my brain stimulated at the same time. Like I, if I'm going to get on the treadmill or if I'm going to get on the elliptical or mm-hmm. my bike or whatever, I'm, well, I'm learning a new skill. I'm yes. watching a sourdough baking recipe, you know, videos on YouTube, or I'm listening to Jordan Peterson, or I'm, you know, I'm stimulating my brain while I'm, while I'm exercising. The other thing that I think might be good, especially for moms is mm-hmm. find something or find someone that you like. YouTube is a great place for this, especially yeah. if you don't want to spend the money. So I have a bunch of resistance bands in our little home mm-hmm. gym. And so I search for a uh, resistance band workouts for beginners, because I know that, you know, I can do anything for 15 minutes. And once you achieve that first and second and third little victory, yes. those 15 minutes, you're like, Hey, you know, I did it today. And I, and I'm thinking I could do it for five more minutes. Right. Because you, right. you're, you're, you're absolutely right about those small goals and look up things that you like. So I might change, change mine out. If you're an older person listening to this, Silver Sneakers has their own, uh, their own YouTube channel. And you guys can get 15 minute workouts that you can do right in your home. They're easy to do. The point is just uh, use it or you're going to lose it. Right. That's right. And I think people that have a uh, phobias towards even the word exercise, um, I've changed it in my own life. Honestly, I've been exercising for 40 years now, Heidi. That's a long time. I know. Uh, that's how I met you the first time. You're like breaking bricks and stuff. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, it's like, you know, I've changed it in my own mind. Now I, I call it movement. And mm-hmm. this is just me. This may help one person out there, maybe two. But when I'm moving, I am worshiping. I put praise and worship in my ears. Yes. And honestly, I'm celebrating the ability to move. That's it. I don't overthink it. I mean, I can get on the treadmill and I can walk for hours. I can get on a bike and I can walk for hours by just celebrating the movement, getting my head in the right space. And I'm not talking headbanger Christian rock. I'm talking praise and worship. Sometimes I'll raise my hands up, you know, and I know people in the gym might think I'm stretching, but I'm just simply <laughs> worshiping because it is a gift to move. It the is. ability of our arms and legs is to do more than just go like this and do what my wife calls fork curls. You know, they're <laughs> they're important, man. And so we've got to like ch- change and shift the way we think about that because it doesn't need to be about a sweaty gym. It needs to be about movement is life. Lack of movement is one day closer to rigor mortis. Oh, man. It's so true. And I think uh, once you get into the habit again, you really do feel better. I mean, you had yeah. said right before we started that there was a study, right, about exercise and Prozac. And what what what, what were the end results of that? Well, a, the scientists figured out that when they compared exercise or movement, in our case, with using Prozac to relieve questionnaire-driven symptoms of depression, they found out that the exercise outperformed Prozac 100% of the time. Now, that's been repeated over and over again. And here's why. Wow. Because when you have... The idea of dopamine production, which is this chemical that's produced in the brain, it's called a neurotransmitter. It's a sort of a neurotransmitter of reward. It's like people out there that are in the working world, business people would say there's a business high, you've achieved a big big sale. That's dopamine. There are people that are addicted to jobs. There are people that are addicted to bad things. There's people that are addicted to good things. But movement's a good thing. Become Uh addicted to good things, and that will give you good dopamine hits and dopamine surges. And the best way I know how to relieve um, the pressures of life or even the depressures, depression of life is go take a walk, man. I mean, take a walk, calm down, get outside if you can, get some air, get some sun, and you'll see your whole mood, your whole world change. Boy, it's so true. Let's talk really briefly about goal setting. So that's the other thing, right? It's January 
Uh, there's a lot of people that are thinking, hey, there, I'm going to try something new this year. Maybe I remember when I wrote my first book, I still had, I think, I, well, all seven of our kids. Actually, no, we didn't have our seventh yet. So I had six kids. Mm. I'm homeschooling them. And it was just in my heart to write a book. And right. I had to get up very early in the morning and just, you know, make a plan for the day. For me, one of the strategies that's very helpful is try to go to bed early so I can get mm. up early. You don't read very many success stories about people who sleep in till, you know, 10 o'clock every day and go to bed at two in the morning. Most of them, uh, the success stories that I have read or the people that I've known that have been very successful in their lives are disciplined uh, about getting up in the morning and setting and setting goals so they can achieve the things that that God's really placed on there. I think that those dreams are God dreams, things that, you know, that thing that you want to do that God's given you uh, a unique vision for. That's not going to get done without hard work, right? Yeah, and there's really four areas that people need to set their goals in. Physical, emotional, intellectual, spiritual. One more time, physical, emotional. And you you want to find at least one goal in each area. Let's let's look at like, and we know that physical might be a couple different prongs. It might be going to bed earlier. You know, again, that's important. Go to bed at the same time, get up. Uh, It might be that 150 minutes or 75 minutes of, you know, exercise. Um, emotional, I like 60 seconds of quiet, just one minute of quiet, just turn, just sit in silence. I think that does an amazing amount of good for the emotions. For intellectual, I want to learn something new. If it learning Spanish, I want to learn a word a day or something like that. Just one thing to simulate the brain to learn. And spiritual, you know, there's a ton of these Bible reading plans that don't take very long. You get on Bible app or something like that. You can do those while you're walking. Go figure. I do a lot of that, right? And so if you can really think about those four things, you build what's called structure. Structure leads to habits. Habits eventually lead to behavioral change. Behavioral change leads to eventually the ability to achieve goals on a consistent basis. And achieving goals on a consistent basis will eventually lead to predictability and reliability. And I don't know about you, but predictability and reliability are good qualities to have. But it starts out with these good goals and good structures that we're developing. And what you're saying is so basic. Yeah. But we're distracted. We're distracted on our phones. We got, you know, it feels like 100 different things coming at us on any given day. And really that structure is starts with structure. And the same thing is true in homeschool success. I know a lot of people who say, yeah. well, my kids are unschooling. And I'm not saying that you can't unschool your kids, but I think for the 90% of, of the people who choose to homeschool their children, you've got to have some structure. Give you yourself a framework so that you've got something to work inside and the goal setting uh, is the most successful inside of a framework, right? That's right. And the, the goals, again, the, the key words, failure-proof those goals. Okay. Failure-proof goals that are consistently reached will build confidence. Confidence yields success. and that people can work like that. You, you don't have to set these goals big. Just set them small, man. Get yourself in a rhythm of achieving things because too many people today, as you noted, are living in their perpetual failures. Yeah. Oh, better. You know, here's New Year again. Let's do better. And I look at New Year's like, okay, we operate on this sort of calendar basis. That's all it is for me. You know, right. I'm not looking at it as anything special. It's just a, it's a way to set goals based upon a time structure that we have. You know, we operate, you know, here while we're on Earth, right? Um, but that's all it is. It's, right. it's, it's like the idea of short-term, long-term goals. But those goals have, have to be failure-proof. They have to be. Yeah, it's so, it's so, it's so important to start small. And I'm, I'm really looking forward this time next year to kind of hearing, you know, what the listeners are, what goals are setting right now mm-hmm. while they're listening to you and I. And we'll come back a year from now and hopefully hear people's success stories. I want to jump into some questions Mm -hmm, that have come in for you. We always get great questions from listeners. So thanks everybody for sending those in. Uh, Some of these are just really, I think, really great for a new year. An anonymous listener in Texas Mm -hmm. wrote in and said, uh, Dr. Mark and Heidi, what are your favorite snacks to have on hand for a hungry 13-year-old boy? Hmm. That's a great question because it's important to understand that a 13-year-old boy is much different than a, a 50-year-old male or a 50-year-old mom or whatever the case may be. The bottom line is they're in a growth spurt. So they, they're going to be 
and hungry eating all the time. And yes. that's okay. You know, we've got to make sure that when they're eating like that by design, we're not allowing them to have things that's going to make them gain inappropriate weight. Very important. So I like nuts and seeds, mm-hmm. fruits and vegetables. I like having those around all the time. And if you can have things where they can grab and, and people say, might say, well, my child doesn't like that. If you have them around enough, taste is something that's acquired and trained. Just know that. It will happen. You keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. Um, stay away from the things that the world is doing. Stay away from the Cheerios and, and all that mess, the cereals, because that those are literally destroying people's lives on a daily basis. There's a whole bunch of reasons for that. But nuts and seeds and fruits and vegetables are great. If you want to venture into having smoothies from time to time, that's also an amazing thing to pack in a ton of nutrients for your growing child. So important. Are there any things that are just um, easily like a mom can throw in a lunchbox or something that's not necessary? I know that it goes against like conventional wisdom. We're trying to really stay away from processed foods. Yeah. But there are more and more companies now that are coming out with packaged uh, snack mm-hmm. items that are actually not bad for you that you could grab out of your pantry or whatever and throw in your kid's backpack. Do you have any favorites like that? You, I've seen a lot of those protein packs that they have at convenience stores. Those mm-hmm. aren't too bad, honestly. You're talking okay, about. Okay, look at this is on my desk. I'm not gonna lie. Perfect. It's all it's empty, but but this is what I bring with me. This is an organic omega three deluxe mix. It has walnuts, yeah, uh, pumpkin seeds, almonds, pecans, and cranberries. Just a little package like this, and I have these here in my studio, and I love them. And I go in with my they go with my kids too. Yeah, those are perfect, and and so a lot of those um, uh, lunch meats that they have that they are better. Don't yeah. get too weirded out about the nitrates and nitrites. That's part of the process, you know. That's part of the the story, so it doesn't spoil. But really, if you think about it, the more natural foods that are packaged like that, and there's more of them today, those are never bad. Yeah, it's, it's the ones that are like the the cheese whiz and the cheeses and those <laughs> things. Those aren't food. But lucky you know, lucky like, charms. It, yeah, th- you have food. And so if we just do that, those are great. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. yeah, I love that. All right, Jessica in Georgia has a question for you. She says, uh, Dr. Sherwood, we're expecting baby number five in January. And don't feel confident giving all the vaccines like we did with our other kids. Man, we're hearing this a lot. Mm-hmm. But she says, no pediatrician will take our insurance without uh, doing a full vaccine schedule. And we can't afford to pay a naturopathic doctor out of pocket if the baby, quote, seems fine, is there any real reason to take her to a doctor during those first few months? If there is a real crisis, we can go to a clinic, but would lose access to wellness visits unless we do all vaccines right from the start. This, you know what, uh, Mark, this makes me angry Yeah, this that mothers not- are being put in this position. I know that this is happening because my daughter, who's raising her four little ones, is finding the exact same thing. Well, Jessica, first of all, congratulations on number five. That's really, really awesome. So well done. You. Help them more, and you'll be caught up with Heidi there. So there you go. Right? <laughs> um, but the point being, it's not, it's not, it's not a contest, Jessica. No pressure. You no, know, this this is a big deal because the vaccine discussion, the CDC at yep. present has sixty six vaccines they've approved. Yep. That's not six. That's sixty six. That's a that's a crazy amount of number, and the number's growing rapidly. You can't really turn on the TV anymore without seeing a vaccine commercial. Yep. Um. Th- this is what I would do with that if if I'm you. Um, I believe there are more pediatricians that are sick of it too. And I think if you search hard enough, number one, you're going to find a pediatrician. And, and I would ask friends. I would ask um, colleagues. I would even call your insurance company, the carrier, and ask them the question. So you, you might need a pediatrician for an emergency situation. As far as the vaccines go, as a parent, you have the ultimate responsibility of making those decisions. That is yours. And I think you make that a matter of prayer. I do believe that vaccines as a general rule weren't started off as bad, but I think it became a profit tool. And, and that's kind of what's happened. So there are some vaccines out there that would make sense, you know, like the polio and things like that, of course, you know. But look, I mean, I think you make that a matter of prayer and you let the Lord give you peace about that because the answer and the responsibility lies with the parent. Yeah, it's true. And I think parents have really been. Uh, taken out of the driver's seat for a long time. This is, I mean, the education system, which I rail against all the time, 
is absolutely ground zero for the hostile takeover of the nation. And parents have felt and been lied to. You can't yeah. educate your children, which absolutely isn't true. All right. One more question. It's all we've got time for today. Yeah. Uh, Heather in Indiana would like to know your take on the flu shot. She said this was the first year that we haven't gotten the flu shot and we got hammered by the flu. It's so confusing to know what to do or, or who to trust. I mean, she's right. And this is the question. This is, mm-hmm. this is the lasting takeaway of the Rona and the ridiculous uh, actions of the CDC, which people don't trust anymore. But I got to tell you, I mean, Heather, my, my experience was different. The only two years that I really got hammered with the horrible flu were the years I got the flu shot. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know who to trust. I don't know. Uh, what's your take? Well, here's a deal with Heather with the flu shot in general. And it, every year is the next best guess of the strain it's going to be. Just know that. It's not a certain thing. There is no guarantee that if you take a flu shot, you won't get the flu. There's no guarantee that if you don't take the flu shot, you will. And the flip side is also true in both of those equations. Having said that, a flu shot is nothing more than a, it's supposed to be a harmless amount of a flu that's introduced so the body will build antibodies. However, in the changing environment of the flus, it's not 100%. It's not a preventive, like we're told. It never has been and never will be. Um, I've taken the flu shot before. I haven't taken the flu shot before. <laughs> I, I, I'm in a place in my life at this point in time where I'm probably not going to. That's just me, you know, because like everybody else, I'm kind of sick of um, lack of trusting the group yep. that, that are. And so I get that. And even the very idea of asking the question kind of tells me where you are as well. So I, I think you, you trust your gut on this one. The, the previous answer, you trust your gut when that's driven by the Lord as he guides you in this question. Yeah, it's true. And and there's ways that we can build our immune system naturally. Yeah. You and I have been singing the praises of vitamin D for a long, every time you're on the show, I mean, I take 10,000 units of uh, vitamin D every day. And I, for me, it was a lifesaver. I mean, I, I think yeah. I said on the show when I went in and had been, you know, sick, sickness after sickness after sickness. And then finally my doctor said, I wonder if you got how your vitamin D's, it was like 16 or something yeah, ridiculous terrible. like that. Yeah, it was bad. And so uh, I started, this was years ago that I started taking a really good vitamin D and people, what are some just basic supplements, nothing fancy, but just generally you should say, hey, you guys should be doing this. Well, everybody out there needs to be taking, if if you're an adult, you need to be taking a minimum 5,000 IUs of D, probably more. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking even kids over 12, right? Under that, you might go one or 2,000, but they need D. They also need omega-3 fatty acids. I've, I've watched people go deficient on that. If you're an adult, three grams under that, under 12, maybe maybe one or two grams a day. Uh, you also need vitamin C. Uh, mm. You could probably go 1,000 milligrams at minimum on that, up to three or four. Um, the vitamin A is also good. Many times that's deficient. Adults, 5,000 international units are very, very good. And then, believe it or not, I like a good multi with that, too a good multivitamin mineral, because there are pathways in our body, Heidi, are all driven by these nutrients that build up in cells, and the cells create energy for our systems to operate. So we really need a good variety of that stuff. And then by all means, get outside, get some sunshine, and don't be viral phobic, and don't be people phobic. Man, give hugs freely, and that's, that's right. called building that's your right. immune system. One trip to Walmart will inoculate you for the rest of your life. I'll oh, tell you that's what. It. That's right. It's so true. Stand in lines that are busy. There you go. That's right. Well, and you have some wonderful supplements over at uh, Sherwood.tv. If people want to get a discount there, they can use yeah. you can use the code that you've created just for the Heidi St. John Show. It's it's uh, Sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi. You guys, there's a bunch of great things over there. Go check it out, and people can also access you uh, and your mm-hmm. wife and your practice at the same link. So there's a lot more questions here and I don't have time for them today, but we'll come back again and we'll get to it. If you guys for have sure. questions, are you, we're enjoying this, aren't we? We're having a hoot and hollering good time. This is fun doing this. I appreciate the <laughs> question, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Remember your question is probably 50 other people's questions. So ask the question. It's good. Yep. We love that. And you can submit those to us at mailbox Monday. So just go to HeidiStJohn.com forward slash Mailbox Monday, and that's where you can do it. Dr. Mark, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful new year, and I can't wait to see what God does with you in the year to come. 2022 was a was a barn burner, and uh, yeah. it really was with you running for governor yes. and 
me running for Congress and uh, people really getting off the bench. And I just so appreciate your good, your attitude and your love for people. It really does reflect the heart of the Lord. Best days are ahead. Let's keep hope alive and let's go into 2023. We're here. So let's go into it with um, a a motivation to make it better than ever with a reflection of the past, but don't dwell on the past, but let's go forward and just win this thing. I love that. I love it. Thanks for the encouragement, my friend. I appreciate you coming on the show. We'll do it again soon. Sounds good. If you guys have more information on Dr. Mark Sherwood, you can visit him at sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi. Tons of great information there. And don't forget to submit your question to us. I will link back to that in the show notes today. Hope you guys have a wonderful New Year's Day. Love your families well. And I'll see you back here again tomorrow at the intersection of faith 